the main goal uh, of our project is um, uh, to use X-ray diffraction uh, imaging uh, to determine the structure of uh, molecules and their dynamics. Um, this can be extremely important in um, um, determining some fundamental physical and chemical processes, um, like um, the photosynthesis process, for example. Um, we expect that um, the detector data rates uh, at the LCLS, the linear coherent light source, will um, advance exponentially over the next few years. Um, we expect uh, the data rate to go from 120 hertz to 1 million events per second by 2025. Um, the objective of our project is to uh, leverage the exascale computing to reduce from weeks to minutes the time to analyze molecular structures using X-ray diffraction data. Exascale um, uh, will capabilities will allow us to uh, both increase um, the analysis rate at which we can uh, uh, analyze images generated by LCLS, but it will also allow us to uh, provide um, um, more details and uh, provide more insight about the kind of analysis that we do using this data. What we are able to do today, um, what we have shown on pre-exascale machines like Summit and Cori, is that um, we are able to scale the analysis code that we have today uh, up to about three kilohertz. Our goal is to go up to five kilohertz, uh, which means 5,000 events per second, and at the same time increase um, as we move from pre-exascale machines to exascale machines, the kind of uh, analysis that we can do with this data. One of the key development that we want to be able to do um, is what we call single particle imaging. Um, this is the ability to reconstruct a single molecule uh, from uh, millions to billions of images that we expect to collate to collect over the span of a few days at SCLS um, when the SCLS2 upgrade is deployed between 2022 and 2025. Um, this will be a revolution for um, uh, what can be done at, with a free electron laser. Um, the ability to use um, the SCLS as a camera that fundamentally through very high performance computing will allow us to see in quasi real time the reconstruction of the um, uh, particles that are illuminated by our X-rays. The SLS will um, uh, allow for the first time uh, to take um, uh, images of structures and to provide the dynamics of um, uh, proteins, viruses, uh, that today are not possible to be collected with any other technology under physiological conditions, for example, at room temperature. Our effort today is to use the pre-exascale machines like Summit uh, to do this um, uh, additional development of uh, our um, reconstruction code. Um, and then uh, when uh, we will be able to access exascale machines, for the first time, we will be able to complete the reconstruction in real time which means that the users will be able to see the fully reconstructed structure of their sample as they are taking data. And this is extremely important for um, uh, SCLS because it provides uh, the users a mechanism to optimize their experiment so that they don't feel like they are flying blind while they are taking data. Today, uh, it can take weeks before uh, they can see the reconstructed images uh, from the data that they have acquired at the LCLS. With exascale capabilities, we will be able to provide this reconstruction in real time. So for the first time, the users will be able to see in front of them what the data that we are collecting is look, looks like. So exascale uh, will allow us two fundamental advantages uh, compared to what we have today. The first one, it will allow us to, write, to run more complex uh, code um, that will allow us a higher resolution and uh, a significantly deeper insight on the um, samples that we are uh, analyzing. 
that being chemical processes or um, uh, single particles. At the same time, exascale will also allow us to in dramatically increase um, the reconstruction rate so that we can provide this reconstruction information to the users in quasi real time instead of having to wait for weeks. And this is extremely important because uh, it allows the users to not fly blind, to optimize uh, um, the experimental setup for the next measurement in an environment where otherwise they have very little chances of um, uh, being able to run uh, their experiment again for years. Quasi real time uh, feedback is essential to um, the success of the experiment and also to the, reduce the time between the experiment and the time to publication. <laughs> 